Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to the last video, the last discussion training thingy <laughs> that I do for 2020. Um, also, it's the end of the random bit series until there's more random bits, because next week we start the series on reclaiming innocence and discovering ourselves through that point of view. And then after that, we get deep on the causation of codependency, the two cycles, intermittent reinforcement, uh, trauma bonding, love addiction, how we heal it, all that stuff as we build up to the uh, launch of the Heal Yourself strategy. So today I want to talk a bit on the necessity of not caring all the time. So that might sound a little contradictive, uh, a little like, what? What do you mean by that, Marshall? What's going on there? So before we get to that, if you're new to me, I'm Marshall Berkshire, and I help codependents rediscover their happiness by helping them heal the trauma bond, discover who they are, and create happy relationships in their lives. And that's my big goal: is helping you guys, helping you guys go from a codependent, enmeshed experience to your own brilliant individuality, so that you can create relationships, friendships, and joy in your life. Because that's what you deserve. That's what you're worthy of. So before we get this. Started, I need to click a button and share this out to the community. The community is your safe haven here on the internet. It's also a very structured community. We have a whole set of <laughs> rules around communication and how we engage with each other so that we can make sure it is safe. And that's the goal there is to provide a safe haven so you can discover how to relate with others in healthy ways, discover true, real, healthy support as well as uh, managing conflict or differences, but also getting access to tools, getting access to guidance from me and from other students that are on the same path and road as yours, and finding out you're not crazy, you're not alone in the journey that you have been going through. So the link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and uh, you can click that and join. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button as well as I add videos several times a week okay so yes if this thing comes up it comes up yes the necessity of not caring all the time that can bring up a lot of different responses for people they're like what that's narcissistic or wow that's selfish or like i shouldn't be able to do that that makes me bad and this concept and that these reactions come from a space of believing that empathy is always the right response. See, our empathy tends to get hijacked and it pushes us into other people's yards to regulate how they feel, to become responsible for them. Someone else's emotions, especially if they're a pure adult, are not your responsibility. What's your responsibility is the impact of your behavior on their world. And if they have emotions about that impact, then you empathize with them while allowing them to regulate and manage them. That's healthy, boundaried empathy. Usually what people are doing when they're chronically in care mode is they're not really all the, oops, all the time empathizing. They're enmeshing with the other person. They're seeking a sense of connection and value through the experience of becoming important to them by helping them feel better. This was something I did an awful lot in my life. And it was very, uh, it's intrusive. It's violating because I'm treating other people as though they're children and not actually respecting their ability to manage their own emotions. I'm also breaching boundaries, stepping in other people's yards, controlling things and making it about me. Not a very healthy thing and certainly not empathy. Empathy itself has a respect towards the well-being of the other person. It says, yeah, this is really hard. I'll walk with you in it. But they don't solve the problem. Empathy doesn't solve a problem for a person. Empathy allows them to have space to discover their own solution to their problem. It believes in their well-being. It believes in their capability. It supports their adulthood and their maturity there. But then there's this also this other side of things where we tend to care too much about what other people think. 
And this gets us into whole sorts of emotional knots about what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not and trying to show up the right way so we get this result and this reaction and yada, yada, yada. It also makes people's behavior feel very personal to us. We personalize or internalize it as something about us that we need to deal with. When in reality, maybe it doesn't actually matter. Yep. I, I mean that literally. Like yesterday, I had an individual who was very upset with me about a choice. Um, I called them out on a certain thing that happened and they were very, very not happy about that. And they were quite negative towards me and it personally tried to, you know, they, they did their aspersions and attacks. I'm like, cool. This isn't a me thing. <laughs> I, I didn't, I don't have to change it because I am, and this is the secret here, fine with how I showed up. That's the beauty of it. When I stopped caring about how other people felt about what I was doing, I could then make a choice about, well, who do I want to be in this? How do I want to show up? Who do I want to be? What would I be happy with in this? So it's not what kind of result would I be happy with? Would I be happy with how I showed up? Because in their concern there and, and, and their expression, they, they shared a lot of vulnerable things. I validated that. I'm like, yep, that's a really important thing. That's understandable. It's Those are awful things. And the way you approach this thing was not appropriate. That's empathy. Because empathy is like, yeah, that, that really sucks. I understand that. And the boundary is we don't do that. We don't respond that way. The amount of relief that can come into our world when we stop caring so much about how someone else sees us and we start caring more about how we see ourselves empowers us to really choose to be us because it's not our job to regulate other people's points of view of, about us. It's our job to align and show up with the character, the person that we want to be. That's the confident whole self showing up. And then the people who resonate with this expression show up and those who don't are they'll probably let you know and then you'll be like cool well good luck working that out because i don't have to change me i'm not doing anything that's violating their boundaries i'm not violating an agreement i am not attacking them i am not violating a boundary these are things i'll apologize for and own you know till the end of time because these are valid complaints but me showing up a certain way and they don't like it? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what will we ever do? Like, yeah, well, cool. Work that out. Not my problem. I don't have to care about that. It's not my business. It's not my problem. It doesn't affect me. So, let's see. Sakaya, yeah, it sounds blissful. Sarah shared, thank you for putting into words so well a message I've been trying to convey to others. Ooh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Robin, disassociate, dissociation and hyper-empathy is hard to sort. Thank you for discernment language and staying awake <coughs> with good language. Fine with how <coughs> I show up. Yes. Hyper-empathy is, is, is the breach beyond that boundary. It's like, wow, I'm responsible for that? No. There's a saying I have, sometimes I post, it says, awareness doesn't equal responsibility. Someone's in pain and I'm aware of it doesn't make me responsible for their pain. Now, there's one one caveat, well two. If I did something that resulted in them having pain, I I need to address that, at some level, at least acknowledge it. Second one is children. Now, if my children were in pain, I am responsible for managing that. When they're children, when they're adults, and be like, how do you want to work with that? What what do you need there? Because as a parent to a child, child like a child that's not an adult. It's more like, here's things we can do, empathize with them, care about it, value it. And as they grow, then they become more autonomous, more capable. And it's like, I feel you. I'm here for you. I hold space with you. And it's general empathy. But I don't have to regulate my behavior and I don't have to regulate who I am to get their approval. Because a lot of times that's what we are really worried about when it comes to I care about how they think of me. 
It's not that we care. It's really a confusion around, I care about how they feel versus I care about how they feel about me. These are really different dynamics. Because if I see someone hurting, then I care about how they feel. I, wow, that's a really shitty thing going on. We need to, to look at that. But if I care about how they feel about me because I did something they're not happy with, but it's not something that was a violation, maybe I need to get out of their yard and come back to me and cultivate my own sense of value by not caring about that point of view. It's like they can be upset or disappointed in it, and I can say, yeah, I get that. I can see where you're at. And you're... Good, good luck working it out. It's, I don't have to change. And this is more important when we get outside of the range of like primary relationships, you know, uh, important friendships. We get outside of that dynamic because there's going to be care in that. But we get out here in this this acquaintance circle where, you know, there's just people you never even met and they're telling you things. Oh, you did this wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I don't have to care about that. You don't have to either. You have a right not to care. That doesn't mean you don't care. It means you have a right to choose it. There was this meme yesterday that struck me pretty hard and one of, because of one sentence. And it says, what baggage are you willing to set down? And it dawned on me that like, I don't have to carry the baggage. I started setting baggage down. That's not mine. I don't have to do that. Oh, I've been carrying this from 10 years ago. I've, I've owned it. I'm put that down. There is a point where we can let go of holding on to the care for something. Because eventually, like a rock, care becomes heavy. It's not the primary purpose of our world or life. Support, care, manner. They matter. But they're not the whole spectrum. There's play, there's intimacy, there's companionship, there's there's just being you. So sometimes the real growth isn't to lean more into empathy, it's to lean out of it a bit and to boundary our empathy and become more of a steward over where we apply it, how we use it, how it shows up for us, how we are showing up for it. It's also important, especially if you're dealing with codependency, to realize that a lot of times your empathy compels you to parent other adults. That's a no-no. We don't parent adults. They're adults. Stop raising other people's children. Kind of thing, right? We do that because our job is to respect ourselves and respect our adulthood. And there's a saying I have that probably get this video demonetized on YouTube. It's that these are grown-ass adults and deal. <laughs> Treat them, respect them as the adult that they are. So if they're throwing their little tantrum, you'll be like, well, good luck working that out. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I've got other things to do. Because it's not our job to, to regulate their emotions. It's theirs. That's an adult responsibility. It's as simple as that. Now, co-regulation is important in repair. It's important in communication and in understanding. But if you're dealing with someone with a tantrum, and this is a cycle in the relationship, it's just a manipulation. There's no need to regulate that. The boundary is the regulator. It's like, nope, not doing it. Done. So it's really nuanced and contextual. It's based on patterns of behavior in the relationship. But the power here and just not caring can bring so much more space to your world because then you find out what you really care about because there's things you don't care about. And it's okay not to care about those things. If someone else does, let them take care of it. Give yourself the freedom, the permission to explore this side of your world so that you have more of a sense of boundary emotionally and mentally and energetically with yourself and you can understand what really is valuable to you and what you really care about. Because that's where a lot of your values um, come alive. That's where a lot of your understanding of what meaning is for you and purpose. And then when you're concerned about what other people think of you, 
Give yourself permission not to care what they think of you. Give them permission to think whatever they want. And still be you. Because you don't have to change. You don't have to chameleon yourself to their expectation or what you perceive that would be. Disappoint people. Let them be disappointed. They're adults. They'll work it out. I've disappointed a lot of people and they worked it out. We're still friends. Still going on forward. It's important for us to realize that a lot of times we project our past onto the present and a lot of times that projection has to do with our primary relationship that we've been trying to regulate and change uh, through codependency or project that onto other people these people are not those those other people when we really click into like wow these are just real individuals doing their own thing and that's what they do I, I can be okay. I can accept that. It looks like the video is having some fun down there, so I'll be posting the stable version. But this is the magic of it. This is the importance of this. Is that we get to have empathy, but we also get to have the right not to care. So that we can move on. Because we're going to get criticism, we're going to get doubt, people are going to have issues. We don't need to fix them all. A lot of them we don't even have to care about, especially if they're not from people who are in our primary circle or that we have an agreement or commitment to. So explore who you are by giving yourself permission not to care or giving yourself permission to care a little less about certain things in your world. Because sometimes there's just things I don't care about. And that's okay. <sighs> there we go. That's our last random bit. I... Remember, take time. Be kind with yourself. Remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And allow yourself a little bit of positive, warm regard. Because you're worth it. Okay. okay, I will see you guys in our next video. We'll be starting our discussion on reclaiming innocence. It's role that it plays in healing. And so, I'll see you then. Be safe. And as for a classic dad joke, see you next year. Okay. Bye-bye, guys.